Hi there friends, welcome back to another video on paying it forward. This week I was quite excited because uh, I got to do my first video based upon comments that were left on one of the videos, uh, which was on my most popular video yet related to Azure DevOps information. If you want to take a look at that video, the link of course is provided down below. What struck me in relation to this question was that uh, through the process of providing an ability to see data into Azure DevOps in Power BI, this opened up the question, what other data would I be able to get access to? Um, and what was uh, immediately difficult for me in terms of answering this question was how can you actually surface data uh, related it to Azure DevOps in a way that then can be tabulated and presented back in Power BI. So I found an approach after a lot of research that I thought was pretty interesting. Let's take a look at it. For those of you who are regular viewers to the channel, you may remember this video back from August, uh, which has been one of my most popular videos, which was all about crafting dashboards in Power BI based upon leveraging the OData connection uh, to data in um, Azure DevOps. And I recently got this question uh, from one of the audience, um, which was particularly interesting, um, which was all around, you know, it seems when you go and try and use that OData connection that some of the information is not there. For example, the pipelines table only seems to show the build uh, pipelines um, and the branches and repository information is missing. So I've done a ton of research on this one because, uh, you know, I do have a full time job in the day as well. Uh, but I love getting questions and I love finding, let's say, creative ways to try and find the solution to a problem that may be a common problem out there. Um, and this may not be ideal for everyone, but I wanted to show the approach or the workflow that I've taken um, so that you could think about uh, following it yourself. Um, so let's jump straight in. So firstly, if I just show you here, this is the OData connection that we get when we look into um, Azure DevOps data. And you can see there's a bunch of different tables that are returned um, that we can look into. When you look into some of these though, you'll notice that their repos is missing, the information about the branches is missing, and as was mentioned, um, some of the, uh, let's say, release pipeline information is not there as well. It just shows the pipelines and sometimes the pipeline runs. So the question that I was thinking to myself was, okay, we have, let's say, basic work item information from the Azure DevOps project, but what if we want to go further and be able to um, try this in a smart way? Um, so I did a uh, where I started first was I went on to ChatGPT, as I think anyone would do, um, and started using the advanced editor um, and building um, API calls directly from Power BI desktop uh, to um, various different services. Uh, for those of you who are familiar, there is a bunch of uh, APIs that are provided on um, Azure DevOps. I've opened up, for example, the reference uh, here for you. Um, and these APIs I've used a little bit in the past, but my idea was like, how can I use them to form information that I could then tabulate and then present back uh, in the same Power BI report where I'm using that OData query um, to be able to present the work items. Um, so I thought about it a little bit, and because I'm a low-code developer, I took the following approach, which was to leverage Power Automate and uh, Dataverse. Um, and the reason I did that is because I'm more familiar uh, with that tool set. However, the concepts are the same here in that you could apply them yourself as a as a more skilled developer than me, uh, in that you use the API call to basically uncover the information that you need. You send that to a table and you use the information from the table to present it back into your Power BI dashboard. Um, I think what's particularly interesting here is to see the approach I've taken in Power Automate. Uh, so let's do that. All right, so first of all, I have this Azure DevOps project that I've created here on a demo tenant. And you can see I have a couple of work items in the boards. Um, and then I have three repositories that I've created here. Um, what I'm going to do inside um, this other repository here is I'm also going to create an additional branch, um, which we're going to call um, Recording Live. Um, and then in the other one, we're going to take another branch um, and we're going to call that. We're going to create another branch and call that. This is fun. All right, so now I've created the repositories and the branches for this uh, little demo here. 
uh, we're now going to look at how I'm going to use Power Automate to connect all of this together. So I've already created and tested this flow and I will walk you through what I did in each step. First, I'll give a quick caveat is that all of the connectors that I'm using are premium connectors. I'm afraid that's me as a low-code developer, that's what I need because I um, save a lot of time in not having to write the API calls myself for all of the different um, outcomes here. Um, and Power Automate does a great job of kind of making this really easy for anyone to do. Um, so the first step I do is I just list the Git repositories for the specific organization um, and the project. Um, and then what I do is I built a table inside of Dataverse that I use to capture all of the repositories. And what this contains is it contains the repository name, the repository ID, and the URL. If we take a quick look at the successful flow, uh, which I ran before on the various repositories that I have, you can see that there are four elements that are returned, which is the ID, the name of the repository, the URL, and the remote URL for each of those. Um, and you can see here there's one, two, and then three that are returned. Using that repository information, I then add these repositories to a, the repos table inside of Dataverse that I created. So I just pick the table from my Dataverse um, instance. I paste the name of the repository. You can see I select it dynamically here. And it says from the previous step, list the Git repositories. And I basically pick the name. Um, and then in the advanced options, you can then see I do the same for the ID. So this is for the repository ID that I just select like this. And then also for the URL that I just select like this one, the browser URL. That completes the first step, which is obviously taking the uh, repositories and then storing them uh, into a table. The next part is I want to get the branches uh, for each of those repositories and also to then um, uh, work with those. In this case, there isn't a connector inside of Power Automate that will do this for you. So what I've done is leverage to the API uh, reference guide uh, to basically return all of the different branches using the repository ID um, as the unique um, value that I then cycle through. So you can see this is saying apply to each. So it's basically looping through each one of those um, repositories that it's found. If we take a quick look at the outcome of that step, uh, you can see here's the API call, the inputs that are going in here, and then here's the body. So if we just look at the raw outputs um, and we scroll down a little bit uh, from this, the headers information at the top, You'll be able to see that we have here the structure of the name of the of the branch, um, the object, display name, URL, um, ID, unique name, and other information. And this this completes one, um, let's say, branch that you would see. Um, the one information that's important to know is that every one of the um, branches is let's say has a, has something in front of it which says refs and then heads in front of it. So I take this sample output and what I do in the flow is I use that to create um, a schema that I can use to pass the JSON. So all I need to do is take the output from here, copy it, generate from sample, paste it, and then hit done. And what that will do is it will create a schema for me uh, like this, which you can basically see here. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking the body from the previous step. So I'm taking the branches information, um, using the body here, and then that will basically um, separate out all of the individual parts. You can see now what this looks like here. So you can see in the raw outputs that each of these are individual elements. Why this is important for me is that I want to be able to select each of them individually, uh, which is important for the next step. So if I go now to the next step, which is I want to take all of the branches that I've discovered for those repositories um, and I want to loop through each of those and add them to Dataverse. However, as you noticed before, I had the addition of the refs and then heads uh, part to the branch name, and I don't want to show that up because that doesn't represent the branch name that was selected inside of Azure DevOps. Um, so I want it to show main or the name of the branch uh, and remove some of that information. So the way that we can do that is I have an additional compose step here. Uh, where I'm basically splitting the items that I receive through the past JSON step, um, which which responds to name. Um, so you can basically see if I just show you quickly here, 
that past JSON step has taken each one of those parts of the schema and it's separated them out into each individual component. And I'm taking the name uh, element to then build the expression that I have in this step. Um, and then what I'm doing after that is I'm basically splitting it where it says refs and heads. Um, so that's the first part. And then I'm saying what that would be the zero. And then what comes after that is what I want to return. So I'm basically splitting the value and then taking the second part of the value, which would be what comes after uh, this, um, let's say, forward slash. In the example here, you can see we've returned uh, main as the branch name, and that's been built off here, the refs heads main. If we scroll down a little bit more, we can see there's another one, um, and it's detected that, and now it can see that there's a second one, and it's also extracted that as well. Last but not least, we then take the branch uh, table and we then add the outputs of this, uh, let's say, cleaning up step where we're cleaning up the name of the branch. And then what we do is because we have already the parent repository that that branch belongs to, we associate that as well um, in a table. And I'll just show you quickly in um, Dataverse how I set that up. So in Dataverse, when I was building the structure to capture the data in a table, I use what's called a lookup column. In this parent repository lookup column, you can see that I'm using it to look up the name of the, um, based on the repositories uh, related table. Um, and this will then create a relationship between these two tables. So that if I were to, for example, go into the data here, so if I just go into branches and I try to select a repository here, it doesn't have any information in there at the moment, but if I had a repository already captured inside of the database, it would return the response here. Um, and the way in which you need to relate those is using the OData ID, uh, which is the unique entity or the unique value uh, that represents that line of where the data has been stored. So it's very important to use this particular one that's coming from the previous table um, here where it's representing the repository. So that's kind of like an outcome of that step. You can see what it looks like here. So if I go into the um, box and I go to the add repos to table, you'll see it's actually the first thing that's returned, which is the OData ID, which represents the row that the repository is stored in the repositories table so that I can relate the two uh, together. Last but not least, we just captured the URL. Uh, should we give this a quick run? Let's do it. So we're going to run this in real time. I'm going to hit save and test. It validates that it has the right connections in place. We run the flow. You can see that uh, it's very quick in terms of actually listing the information and it's taken place in about four seconds. So we just have a quick look through. We can actually see that it's returned three repositories. In the first repository, it's found two branches. In the second one, it's found two branches. And then in the third one, it's found two branches. We can quickly check if that's right. So yeah, there's two branches in this one. There's two branches in this one. And then surprise, surprise, there's two branches in this one. What we can also check and have a look at is to see an example of uh, one of the uh, branch names. So this is fun. So we've definitely, uh, we're on to uh, the right thing here. So this all looks pretty good. Let's have a quick look inside of uh, Dataverse to see if this information is also represented in our tables. So if I come in first to the repositories table, you can see we have the three repositories that have been captured here, uh, which are the, um, the ones for uh, PETA1, TEST1 and TEST2 are all good and then if we go back to the branches we can also see that all of the necessary information has been captured here um, and it shows the relationship between the branch name where we have three mains but they're all related to the parent repository which you can see represented here we also have the urls for those as well this is all great. I've now got taken the step of getting the information of my repositories and branches, and I now need to put it, of course, in Power BI. If you've used Power BI a lot, you'll notice that at the top here, we have a Dataverse connector, uh, which is specific for Dataverse. And in this particular case, it's really cool and very, very powerful. 
So once I open up the Dataverse um, connector, I'll be able to see all of the list of tables and we'll have, we'll quickly put in the ones that we need, uh, which you can see here are represented by repositories and also by branches. This will return each of the tables as queries on the left hand side that you can see here. Um, and what I'm going to do just to make things nice and easy is tidy these up a little bit by removing the columns that I don't need. Um, again, you probably saw in my previous video, uh, this is a best practice that I think you should always try and do. Um, so having a chance to do that will also be, will always keep you kind of on top of uh, your data and uh, making sure that everything's nice and clean. All right, so my data is nice and clean. Let's now use it to build some additional visuals. The first thing before I create any visuals is I'm going to look at the model view um, and ensure that the relationship is in place. Um, and what you can see here is that there's already a relationship between the repository's code and the link from the branches back to that. So this is good because this shows that we have a relationship between the two tables already. What this will allow us to do, if we are in this particular case, I've created some quick visuals here. Um, so all I've done is I've built a slicer based on the repository name. Um, and then I have a branch name here related to the branches that you would get from that related um, repository. If I do a quick refresh of the data, because this was from an earlier um, connection that I'd done, you'll see that there's been a little update in that each repository, this basically has a small table here that represents the repository information, a small table for the branches related to the repository, and just a quick number telling you how many branches. And this way you can just cycle through and see all of the different uh, information that you need to get. In obviously in this particular case, I haven't done a API call for the pipelines. Uh, the reasons for that is that I've never worked myself with pipelines uh, inside of Azure DevOps. Um, but what I was able to discover uh, just on that particular question is that there's a whole bunch of API information pertaining to the release details. Um, and for me, if you're going to end up, you know, wanting to build out um, data for these kind of information, you can actually just go and use um, already um, a the APIs um, and kind of use it to build your own tables on the side that you can then use to present your Azure DevOps data. So let's quickly summarize what we've learned today. Firstly, we got this great question, which was all about how can you surface additional information inside Power BI when you're leveraging Azure DevOps information when that OData query is insufficient. One of the ways in which I chose to, uh, let's say, tackle that problem was to use a combination of pre-built actions inside of Power Automate and also using custom HTTP calls, uh, which leverage the API reference guide for Azure DevOps. Using a combination of these and then taking the outcomes of those, I then wrote those two custom tables that I developed inside of Dataverse so that I could then access that data in Power BI so that I can then present that data alongside the work item information that I was already able to return based on what I'd done in the OData query originally. So thank you so much for the question. I always welcome any, any of them that you have and love to kind of interact and see if I can help solve some of the problems you're having day to day. Um, looking forward to seeing how you get on with this one. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to let me know. Thanks so much for watching the video today. Don't forget to pay it forward. Don't forget to comment down below, subscribe and like the video. See you next week.